Hello, this is the Corey Camino team. We are here presenting the go kart. Our members are Michael, Michael Scott, Juan Felipe Aragon, and Luca De Beni. Here uh, we have uh, my simple parts. Uh, in some of them, they were easy enough that uh, just using in part design. In some, in some others, I use uh, GFD, such as the disc hub. Uh, I use uh, the whole command, the the all the volume, uh, all the volume commands of of GFT. Uh, here we also have the stop axle, the tire rod, and the rear shaft. Then I'm gonna show you my hardest part. So here we have the engine. Instead of making us a single part, uh, I divide it into several parts. So here we have the fan gasket, the middle part, which is the engine itself. Uh, then we have the engine shaft, which is here. This uh, right, uh, right now has no purpose. It's for in the future if we want to add another mechanism to for, for any kind of movement. So for this part, if you see here, I, uh, the engine I divided into single parts. Since it was uh, really detailed, uh, I divided it like that. So the good thing about dividing the part like that is that if I want to hide one part, I can just easily do it and take a good look of the other parts. So this part turned out to be really hard for me since I had to uh, do many sketches, circular patterns, and and motor commands like fillets. Then we have the the uh, the fan movement. I'm gonna show you in a second. So here we have the replay, and here we go. Then we we have the disc caliper. This was also my second hardest part since I uh, had to use many uh, detail uh, um, lines and, and and figures. So here we have the the the, st the steel uh, material, and then we go to my front tire. In this part is is relative simple, but it was hard for me since I use parameter parametrization in in order for uh, to increase the tire and 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 the and the rim as 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 desired. And then I'm I'm gonna let, leave you with Michael Scott. It's Mike here, and I just wanted before talking about the. Before talking about the uh, the more difficult objects, I, I wanted to point out a few of the objects in which, or parts in which I was able to create and, and learn from as well. Uh, particularly the uh, the brake paddle and the gear level, the gear lever, as they required a, a bit of GSD and, and the, the sprocket as well, uh, which required basically being very detailistic uh, when it comes to the spline and making sure that the the object is properly constrained but but going into the, the more difficult uh parts uh particularly i i enjoyed how in the the clutch which we see right here now uh basically the the ability to use gsd in order to make the part a little bit more simple uh to make and be more efficient Basically, what I did is I created the outline of what I wanted the tubing to be, and then I used this sweep command. And after that, I added a thickness to make it a body, and then I hit the sweep command. And then that led to me applying that also for the frame. Now, as you can see, the frame is a lot 
there are, are various different uh, parts uh, that comes together and in order to make sure that those parts are are in the right place I had to be as accurate as possible to the location and change it around with with time basically uh, the every specific thing had to be in the right place and using GSD I was able to create the outlier frame as well as the bumper and then the gearbox was somewhat difficult uh, the basic problem with with the gearbox was the different geometrical shapes and being able to make sure that it was in the right place and and using all the details with the edge fillets and that they were at the correct values and something that I wanted to point out is when we created this assembly we, we found it more efficient to have a few sub-assemblies uh, for example we had the back axle and separate from the rest of the assembly as well as the, the tires and that will be explained a little bit further on so now I'd like to talk about my part so what you can see here is um, some of the more basic parts so the way that I attacked this was I try to use the knowledge from GSD and apply it to the simple parts so many of the parts that you see here with the exception of the engine platform were done with the main use of GSD rather than part design and um, something worth noticing um, in comparison between the tie rod left and the tie rod right I applied a sweep for the tie rod left whereas for the tie rod right I applied a multi-faced surface so I actually created two circles and a line that would actually create that horizontal tubing. Now going to the more intricate parts the engine platform as you can see the reason why it was a complicated part is similar to what Juan and Michael were mentioning it had a very intricate and convoluted geometry and to actually attain a part that resembled the actual engine platform it took a lot of time and lots of pads pockets ribs hole patterns uh, rectangular patterns and even padding with two limits which was something that we didn't f closely follow during the course of this class but using the padding with two different with two different limits can actually turn out to be very helpful and very useful now the one of the other more intricate parts was the front body panel which involved a sequence of points that were scattered and what I basically did was I divided and conquered I did half of it and then I mirrored it so the main uses of GSD here were to create the profile and a guide curve so that I could be able to sweep it and create the actual surface to then using the thick surface command from part design and to top it all off I basically went and did the necessary pads, necessary pockets and something that actually turns out that made it harder for me the reason why I used different planes to create these different pockets was because of the reason because I used different points I didn't exactly know where to place a plane so that was actually pretty hard lastly the hardest part 
was the seat. So I took a similar approach, but what I did was I created different points and created a guide curve that would span and extrude, follow, do some trimming, including using the split command and using the surface command. And lastly, I wanted to talk about the kinematics. So going in into what Michael had mentioned, the use of kinematics for this car really were it was an important thing to mention and the way the way that we were able to do it it was by breaking it down into sub assemblies it wasn't only easier to display it but it basically detached the back axle which we believed was the guiding of the go-kart and with it we were able to create three roll curves and three uh, and three revolutes and if I show you the replay it is something like this so as you can see we were able to uh, correctly simulate have all four wheels move and with that we were able to attain a product that is very that is that is very reliable the wheels move the chassis is fixed and yes that is our go-kart we are team corre camino this is luca speaking and on behalf of the team thank you so much for tuning in